There's a lot of research out there about soil health and a ton of technical information, but none of it does us any good unless we can see how it actually takes place at the ground level. My name is Tim Hamrich from the Future of Agriculture podcast. Cool Planet and I are gonna travel the country and capture stories about how land stewards and growers and farmers are actually developing their own soil health and how that impacts their lives and the food they're growing for you. When we set off on this journey of stories from the soil, we didn't know what we were gonna find out. We just wanted to get out there and listen and talk to farmers and growers and, and just understand what they're dealing with, how they look at soil health, and what tools they have at their disposal to try to build soil health over time. This is perhaps one of the most, if not the most exciting frontiers for farming, is soil biology. It's flat out energizing to be part of this. What sticks out to me is that while we have seen a variety of farming practices, farmers, geography, states, crops, etc., the principles of soil health are pretty universal. Trying to build up the water holding capacity, the nutrient capacity, trying to build up the carbon in the soil, increase microbial activity, the principles of soil health are the same, but the way they're practiced is a little bit different. I think back to the first episode we had with Jim Lohr, the CEO of Cool Planet, and talking about the science behind carbon in the soil, that not all carbon is created equally, and the fact that they have accomplished over 100 independent studies about the efficacy of their product. From a farmer's perspective, sustainability is great. I think they're probably the most sustainable people in the world, but they have to do it profitably too. So we need to be bringing them tools that help them with productivity and profitability. Let's take Kulterra for example, a fixed carbon material that goes into the soil that, that basically provides a habitat for the soil biology. The concept of soil health, where our seeds are planted, where our transplants go in, where our trees and crops grow, I think is the next evolution of agriculture. I think about our trip down to Dell City, Texas outside of El Paso and visiting Jay Hill of Hill Farms. Pretty interesting to see how he is incorporating soil health in soils that typically have had salinity issues and even converting raw desert to farmland and having a great crop in the very first year. Soil health in, in, in farming is, I mean, it, it's at the forefront of everything because without soil, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And so as we look at our, our future, we have to plant crops with a map. At the same time, we have to look at what's the next one and what's the next one. So we try to stay seven years. We have to make sure that that, that soil can handle what we're gonna put on it. I'm gonna be here for a long time, God willing. And so if that's, if that's the case, then I want my, my soil to be here with me too. Our visit to Rutland, North Dakota, where we met with soil scientist and extension specialist, Dr. Abby Wick of North Dakota State University, was extremely fascinating to get to see how she works hand in hand with farmers and teach farmers about soil health but also empower them to go out into their communities and spread the word about farming practices that can reduce erosion, build microbial activity, and overall improve soil health. What's your favorite thing to share with a farmer about soil health? My favorite thing is when we go out in a field and a farmer and I dig in their soil and they see what's happening. That's my favorite thing to share with them, is that moment where they're seeing what their soils can do and how quickly they can change. It's a, a moment in time where they're, where they're seeing how something that they're doing is, is changing their soils. In a totally different story, we got to speak with Neve Strauss, who's the director of street tree planting for the New York City Parks. One thing that sticks out to me about Neve's story is how they are trying to get away from the old practice, which is if you want to plant a tree, you bring in outside soil from somewhere else, to taking the native soils that they have at hand and trying to build the health of those soils through compost, through biochar, and trying to protect that native soil and build it over time rather than constantly recycling soils from outside of the community. Ideally, so long as we've done our work correctly, this tree will outlive all of us. And, it, and its benefits are not just for me and you, and they're not even just for our kids, they might be for our kids' kids. And that's an amazing thing. Um, and that actually is what brings me to work every single day, knowing that my daughter and her daughter and her friends uh, will all get to benefit from the work that me and my staff do. We've had quite a journey here exploring soil health. 
I just wanted to say a thank you to Cool Planet for really taking a leadership role in this conversation surrounding soil health. We hope that with this video series, this inspires further conversation to exchange ideas about how can we put the soil first and how can we foster healthier soils and in turn a healthier agricultural system. And we hope that you watching this can add your own ideas to this conversation of stories from the soil. From a soil health aspect, everybody can do it. They, they just gotta figure out how it works for them.